Everybody and welcome back to Revisiting. The past couple of weeks I have been replaying Half-Life Source. Released in 2004, Half-Life Source was developed and published by Valve. It is a pseudo-remake of the classic first-person shooter Half-Life that was released in 1998. And it has been a while since I've played this game. I want to say I played this game for the first time when while I was in high school because that is when I was introduced to the game's sequel, Half-Life 2, which I played on the orange box for 360. It was because I had liked Half-Life 2 so much that I sought out this game on PC. In terms of how I felt about Half-Life back then, I remember really liking it, but not loving it. There were some aspects of this game that frustrated me at the time, and I could already feel the game's age. I've only played this game once more before this recent playthrough, so this isn't a software that I regularly revisit. What made me want to go back and play this game today is that Valve has been in the news recently, but not for something they're doing. Instead, it's what they're not doing. For those of you who don't know, Valve has been getting some competition recently from a number of online video game storefronts. One of these storefronts in particular has been getting a lot of attention for pretty much buying up large, relatively popular game titles and making those titles exclusive to their store. As a reaction, players and the media have been very vocal in their disappointment of these developments. One way they've voiced their disappointments is by actively calling out to Valve to reinvigorate its own gameography in order to draw more people into Steam. And just the talk of Valve's previous titles alone caused me to download Half-Life Source and play through it again. Mainly the goal with this recent playthrough was to re-familiarize myself with the game and share my own opinion of it now. So with my recent playthrough now behind me, I still really like Half-Life Source, although my opinions on its show of age and its weaker aspects have not changed. Replaying Half-Life, I am reminded on how Valve can take a simple experience and fill it with all these little details that can make that experience so interesting. For example, I like how interactable the beginning of the game is for the small, little parts that don't have too much consequence. I'm talking about the things you can grab and throw, and the microwave you can blow up food with. Contrast these moments with the doors that won't open for anyone but the certain personnel, and you have a great tutorial on interactability and the support NPC mechanics that are used throughout the game. Honestly, going into this, I thought the helper AI wasn't going to be all that fun to deal with. I've had my problems in the previous playthroughs, where the AI will get stuck or not do what they're supposed to do. Thankfully, none of that happened in this playthrough. I am always surprised with how fast you move in this game. One tap of the keys, and it feels as if Gordon Freeman, the protagonist, is skating along the level at top speeds. The game overall is pretty fast paced. It's probably one of the faster FPS's I've played. And like the two Turok games I've talked about before on Revisiting, Half-Life is a game that uses its whole scene in its level design structure, as well as having levels that evolve in looks as you play them. I'm starting to notice that this is a pretty common thread between the games I like. I also like how Half-Life will have short little stories as you go through the game. For example, Smithers not coming back from the power generator because it's his hiding spot in Blast Pit. Or the subtle storytelling and the level of questionable ethics. The Half-Life franchise has always been great with the environment design and using their built environments to tell the player the history of a location rather than just spelling it out for them. The shooting mechanics in general for Half-Life aren't that great. Some of the weapons aren't great to use no matter what situation you're in, like the bugs that home in on enemies, or the detached arm that shoots bugs. However, I do like the creativity behind those weapons and their designs. 
In terms of what weapons I do like to use within the game, the shotgun is pretty fun. The pistol is nice for smaller fights, and the SMG is a good spray and pray weapon to use when you're in a bind. Once you start getting into the latter parts of the game, there are some very creative weaponry you can use, like the Tau Cannon or the Missile Launcher that allows you to guide the missiles using a laser sight. The Gluon Gun is probably my favorite gun in the game. It's this straightforward spiral laser that eviscerates everything in its path. The gun literally leaves nothing left of what you are shooting at. The fast movement in the game can become a problem. Coupled with slippery stops, controlling Gordon can be very annoying when it comes time for any kind of platforming segment, which can come up from time to time. I also didn't realize how quickly you can lose health in this game. Even with the HEV suit armor, you can still die pretty quickly. As a result, you always feel so vulnerable in Half-Life. I guess I completely forgot about that. Some of the enemies in this game can really chew through your health. Although, I will say, I possibly played the game on easy on my previous playthroughs of this game. This was the first playthrough where I went into the settings first, and saw that by default the game is set to easy. In this recent playthrough, I made sure I played on normal. Going back to the vulnerability of the player, some enemy types are particularly annoying to deal with, like the soldiers, who are able to take a good chunk of your health away just by shooting at you and throwing grenades. I also don't like any of the flying aliens in the game. These are able to move behind cover and dodge your shots pretty easily. Although, I will say that Half-Life starts to get really fun once your health gets really low. You start to play more cleverly, and take things slower, and the game is made in such a way that it's very possible to survive like that for an extended period of time. One thing that really annoys me about this game is the water segments. If you start taking damage from drowning, your screen will flash blue every time you're hurt. This obstructs your vision a great deal, and can make it pretty hard to find a way to surface. It can also be hard to see when swimming in water because of the fog, or maybe it's the water thickness, that's maybe what I'm seeing. Additionally, I really wish they put a meter for your oxygen like they do for your flashlight. Keeping on subject with Half-Life's annoying features, I don't like how sometimes in the game you can loop around to an earlier point where you once were, without any way to return. Especially when it took you a while to get to the point you are now. Some of the physics definitely aren't as great as they used to be. Certain physics puzzles would bug out and I would sometimes get stuck and have to reload a save. And I guess I could use that to transition to some aspects of the game that I feel are dated. I did notice a lot of screen tearing when playing the game again. The audio quality is fuzzy and can be a bit overbearing with its volume at times, completely drowning out dialogue and sound effects. I do think it's cute how reflective the metal is in this game. It really is a product of its time, but I can tell at the time that Valve was proud of this material rendering technology, especially since it's a big part of the SMGs and the Magnum's visual design. Going back to the audio, the shrieks of pain that come from the scientists are very funny. They do sounds like meh and ah. The soldiers' dialogue can also be pretty humorous with them screaming in a very husky voice that has this radio filter over it. I would also like it to be known that I do not think that these negative or dated aspects define the Half-Life experience. As I said, there are little things Valve put into the game to make it a much fuller experience. For example, I like how Half-Life isn't afraid to put a good distance between the player and the enemies, so that the player has to use weapons such as the crossbow. I also like the detail of becoming so radiated at the touch of toxic waste to a point where the radiation starts to eat at your armor points. It actually makes me wonder what the history is like between RPG-like status effects and first-person shooters. Going into the specifics of Half-Life, I'd like to talk about some of my favorite levels in the game, which you can access without even needing to play the game all the way through. I believe that is a feature that is exclusive to the Source remake. First of all, Office Complex is very fun. It features an emphasis on connecting hallways, puzzle-like scenarios, and team member AI. It's a nice starting game level that has a bit of a horror vibe running through it with the zombies. This is as far as I go. 
Blast Pit is a great level. It has some pretty memorable moments in it, like the tentacle monster that only reacts to sound, getting to the fuel rooms, and turning on the power. Power Up is so intense. I love the ever-presence of the invincible gargantuan monster, and the conclusion of the level, where you have to make this desperate run to the electrical towers and power switch in order to kill it. On a Rail is such a great chapter. I love all the little moments of quiet, with little skirmishes spread out amongst the side rooms. The level is also littered with opponents to either flank oncoming enemies, or let them fight each other out. And all of it culminates in the only outside section of the level where you have to fire a rocket out to space, with this percussive rock track noting your victory. The sequence and gameplay of this level is all around great, and is one of the best FPS levels out there in my opinion. One level that really stood out to me on this playthrough was the 12th level of the game, Surface Tension. I think Surface Tension might be the longest level in the game, and there is so much in it. In addition to its length, Surface Tension is also one of the harder levels in the game. It starts out very, very well with the dam sequence, which acts as a kind of standoff between you and a helicopter. Opening up the dam and swimming to some land results in a helicopter chase that is coupled with a miniature three-scene puzzle that can get pretty intense. While you're trying to figure out your way around that, you'll run into mines you can only find if you detonate an explosive in an area that has one. After clearing the puzzle, you end up in a very needed mellower part of surface tension. There are more buildings, more silence, and less enemies. The helicopter is gone, but in its absence is the threat of snipers hiding in the blown up holes of the building walls. If you find one, take him out with a grenade or explosive. Do not walk out in front of him or you will take a lot of damage from one shot. There is this one really touchy jump in this particular section of the level involving a ladder and some platforming. A normal player will hold the jump key on the jump arc to the ladder, but don't do this. You'll bounce right off the ladder. Instead, press the jump button once as you run toward it. You'll attach to the ladder. This specific jump frustrated me even on my recent playthrough here. The next couple of levels after Surface Tension offer some intense moments in the game that make Half-Life worth playing it for these experiences alone. Since you were in the last half of the game, and the hardest level is behind you, the evolution of your power becomes clear. You can go from a weak, theoretical physicist to a walking one-man army. You get the feeling that you are on a power trip. It is awesome. After the Lambda Core level, the game takes a very interesting and left field turn. Gordon Freeman sees himself going from the familiar and claustrophobic halls of Black Mesa to the open and alien world of Zen. While most of Half-Life has settings that are very grounded and has scenarios that can be taken seriously even with the aliens running around it, once the player reaches Zen is where the game starts to get a little silly for me. I wouldn't say in a bad way, I like the direction here. It's just something you wouldn't expect would be a part of the game for most of the playtime here. The environments within Zen are rife with hazards that can affect you severely. There is also a clear power struggle presented between the alien species you've been fighting in the game up to this point. When contrasted with the Black Mesa Labs, Zen really gives you the feeling that you are not on your home turf anymore. I actually noticed for the first time on this run that there are a couple of dead people in Zen wearing HEV suits. Which I wonder if this is the result of previous G-Man experience with trying to access Zen. As for the levels themselves, I wouldn't say the Zen levels are that great. The emphasis on platforming reveals Half-Life's flaws with its platforming mechanics. These levels aren't exactly hard to beat either. Essentially, once you get to Zen, it already feels as if the game is over. I would say that Interloper is the weakest chapter in the game. Neither its platforming sections or its shooting sections are all that fun. You just have to bear through it. And finally, for a final boss, the Nihilanth is fine. I hope I pronounced that right. Unfortunately, he's got some platforming segments in his fight that are less than desirable, and how to beat him can be a bit cryptic, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Overall, the levels that take place within Zen are pretty short, which might be for the better. The Black Mesa labs are much more interesting by comparison. 
and that really does it for my thoughts on Half-Life Source. I'm very glad I went back and played it. I had more fun with the game than I had problems, but I will also say the problems are too present to be ignored. If I were to give the game a score, I would give it a 7 out of 10. I would definitely recommend Half-Life Source, especially if you are a fan of first-person shooters or video game narrative experiences. I normally see the entire Half-Life franchise go on sale often, so as summer comes around and you want to try the game out for yourself, keep an eye out on Steam. And that really does it for this revisiting episode. I don't know what game I'm going to do next, especially since I've done three first-person shooters previously, and I kind of want to do a fourth because of something that's happened recently, but we'll see how it goes. Until then, I look forward to making another video for you guys. See you later.